Hi there, it's Mr. T back again and thanks for tuning in. This part two of the culture of the Dominican people will primarily be explained by some sharp Dominican friends of mine. But first, let's enjoy some quick clips from the island. Rudy, how do you describe Dominican people's driving? The first thing is that this is the only country in the world where 90% of the Dominican people drive on the wrong, on the opposite side, the wrong side of the street. Sometimes. Sometimes. And the people here on the motorcycles, we know that around the world, everyone uses a helmet here. Totally different story. Everybody tries to avoid that. And that is chaos. Is that because they're too hot? It's too uh, sunny? Not because it's too hot. They're just people here. They're not, they're not too educated on safety, on putting helmets on for their safety, their, their loved ones' safety also. And another thing is that here in the country, this is the only country in the world where the speed limit, the speed limit is not obeyed. Well, Mr. T, I've been in the States and some other countries, and I can tell that here, we use a more preventative driving. People are always alert, always expecting the unexpected. Um, people passing on the right, people passing on the left. Uh, things that you don't see in, in, in other countries. Uh, people also use a lot of hand signals here. Uh, when they're going to turn left or turn right, they stick their hand out. <laughs> the honk, they use a honk uh, for everything. Even just to say hello to someone that's standing on the side of the road. For the way people drive here, there aren't, it's surprising that there aren't uh, more accidents. And I think that is the reason why, because people are always alert, always expecting, you know, the unexpected people passing here, passing there, cutting in front of you, or, 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 or just uh, uh, turning uh, uh, to, the, uh, to the left when <laughs> there is a red, a, a red light. Uh, it's crazy, it's, it's like chaos, but like a control chaos. Dominican drivers are good, some, and some are bad. I think that's happening in many countries. But in some places right here, driver is just crazy. <laughs> Especially Moroconcho. <laughs> you just want to scream it, move it on, <laughs> when you are driving, because really they just go inside. Normally, if you, they go fast and they have a lot of problem in the, in the mind, they need to arrive to some place, you know, they don't think about it, they just want to arrive, you know, for they, then they are correct in the way they are, in their, their mind. You pass your exam from the, from the school, you know, driver school, you have your licensing, everything, you can know everything. But here, you need to have a lot of attention, a lot of attention in the street. Mr. T, you want to be a Dominican? Well, let me just try to imagine that for a moment. Hey, Pedro, get a mango. Well, the first thing is that 
any any neighborhood you move to here in the Dominican Republic, there always seems to be a problem with the noise. People talking super loud, the music I'm blasting, and they do not respect their neighbors. So where does that come from? That comes from lack of culture. Well, maybe that is the culture. Well, well it's become it, the culture, you think? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, anywhere you go to around the world, noise is reduced to a minimum and your neighbor and your loved ones respect it. So maybe lack of uh, education? Well, that's a little big problem here. Around the world, the books are free, but here when, when you go to the to most schools and universities, you have to buy the books. And that's not good. Well, what's not free overseas is the taxes. <laughs> so we get to pay one way or the other, but uh, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, thanks for that. Well, we Dominicans are loud. I can just tell you that right up front. We're loud, and we love our loud music. We love being loud. Even when we're somewhere you know, in some other country, people tell, can tell when Dominicans are in the group because we are the loudest ones. <laughs> it's the culture, you know, the, our music. You know, we love music, and we like, um, you know, we like to pump the volume all the way up. And we want to feel the music in our body, and I think that is the reason why we're 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 loud. Uh, is because we like to feel the music, we like to dance the music, and we feel the uh, you know the drums, you know the, the the bass. We want to feel that in our body in order to you know motivate us to dance. There is many Dominican. They put it on a lot of like music, very very high, and very late in the night, for example. Or you just put it on in the car in front of a house or a place, you know, leave a quiet place, you know, boom boom boom, and that's very much respect. We need to be better. Uh, the younger generation is not as tolerant to noise as my generation. So I think that there is a conscience, conscientiousness, um, an awareness of noise pollution. There are laws that have been enacted to control the level of noise. But these laws are not implemented. In order for you to have them implemented, you have to call the authorities. So I would say that overall, Dominicans have a high level of tolerance for noise. I personally don't like noise, but uh, it seems not to bother people, the level of noise. Would you call them disrespectful? I would say that people are disrespectful, uh, but it's not done purposely. It's just a lack of education, of awareness. awareness. They haven't been made aware that this is a violation of my space, of your space, that having a noise level that is bothersome to me can be offensive. Uh, they don't, uh, they have not been uh, instructed, they have not been um, educated to know that uh, transgression of certain boundaries of noise can be extremely offensive to other people. But it's a critical situation. Once children are formed educationally with certain values and morals and, and concepts, principles, then I think that they will be more sensitive to noise pollution, to uh, throwing garbage out the window of a car, we are the family together, we make a sancocho. That's something special for us. What's the ingredients? Oh, different kind of meat. Please tell me. Um, yeah, chicken, pork. What is there is another one? Chicken, no, pork, pork and chicken only. They had yuca, you know, yuca is something like a root. Mm -hmm. uh, young. You know, they think we make it with the yuca, cassava, banana, carrot, pumpkin, 
So, potatoes? many things. Uh, yeah, some potatoes. Yeah, pumpkin seed, yama. That's in the sancochos. Here I am, just starting my sancocho. Yum, yum. I would say that more than half of Dominican people, they do not want to work. They want to do like illicit or illegal stuff, you know, to make easy money. And another thing is that they love to borrow money from the next person, n never pay back, and that's, that always brings a problem. Uh, I would say that uh, partying, you know, going out with friends, getting together with a group of friends, going to a river, you know, doing a cocinao, or you know, cooking a cookout. Uh, that those are uh, typical habits of Dominicans. Bad habits. Uh, just throwing garbage everywhere. It's one of the bad habits that people have here that haven't really created any conscious about uh, the environment. That yeah, that's the worst habit that I think we have. There are some people that they don't like to make the queue in the supermarket, for example, or use. Uh, in the bank can be they want to be first special some men <laughs> macho men <laughs> so but no all all then are like that they used to make pee, pee outside you know when they go drive it you stop and make pee, pee in some like jungle places and like this and <laughs> but i don't see that just from the men to my country i see that too from other men from the other countries <laughs> But that's, they, they used to do this too. We used to uh, have many excuses for everything. It's just we don't take some time to use uh, the responsibility about what we do or the bad things that we do or the bad habits we have. We just always we need to have like one excuse. Like if we arrive late, oh, I arrive late because my, my baby was sick when wasn't or maybe was uh, making another things, you know. And those are excuse, excuse, excuse for everything. It's like in defense all the time. And we need to be responsible about what we do. The Dominican people, typical habit is get a food on time, socialize, spend time together. That's it. A few moments later. Well, a big thing that is that here that most, I would say about 90% of the Dominican people, they drink and all that. So, all that about about family is not too good because since there's no education in the family, the families always seem to be fighting over something and that divides the family even more. Uh, we're very close and it's very important to be very close. Something happens to one member of the family and the entire family will react to it and we always want to uh, be close to our relatives and make sure that everyone uh, it's okay. It is very, very, very important to be very close to the family. Uh, what I've seen in other countries is that it's not so much so like here. Uh, when, for example, kids, um, um, you know, they get married, they go live somewhere else. Here in the Dominican, pretty much, we want to keep the family together, and you'll see. Um, if the father and the mother own a house and you know some property when the the boys when they marry they bring their wives to the family and they're very close together family is very very important in, in my country so we argue we fight it we love each other we resolve problem each other um, we make a suicide fool each other uh, but together. The fathers right here from this country sometimes, you know, they just leave the family sometimes, many of them, the Dominican father. Sometimes uh, uh, we are disagree, disagree, and some 
things in the family inside, you know, in the problems in the family. And maybe I'm bad with my brother or, or whatever. But if something happened to me, my brother is the first one. It's gonna check in what's happened with me and who's make me something bad. You understand? It's just the love. It, that's his love. We can argue each other, we can fight each other, but when someone needs the other really and, and feeling, you know, it's just right there. We got here. This is a different seafood type of seafood marijuana. Seafood marijuana. Didn't even know that existed. Yeah. Now. So uh, that's those little uh, suckers that suck onto the rocks. Yes. What are they called? I am not sure. I think they're, they're, they're sea roaches or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and then you got lambi, and I'm not sure what else in there, but everything it's supposed to be there. Everything good from the sea. Super duper. All right. Niagara. <laughs> okay. And this one I make it with red wine. And this is seafood as well, or? Yeah, yep. Yeah? This is already made and this is not ready yet. This is raw. And this one is cured. So you're going to be pouring liquid into that now? Yeah, wine, red wine, rum, and honey. Okay, excellent. Yes. So there you go. If you dare to try something from the sea, seafood mamawana. I think it's 10%. I ambitious. I ambition, yeah. The other one is uh, they just want a fun. They just want to go party. to the disco, party, smoke, fun. And then they don't think about future. They don't care what happened tomorrow. They just live in life every day. Would you say it's because they're not willing to pay the price or because they haven't been brainwashed away in America, Europe and other places where you're not a success unless you're making two hundred, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars a year plus. You know, is that because it's never been pushed on society here? They, they don't want to pay the price because when you when you gotta do that, when you try to do that, you gotta play hard. You gotta work a lot. Yeah. And the people that doesn't want to work a lot like that and save money. They 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 work a little bit and then they spend the money in party, uh, like I say, party, play, a drink. Mm -hmm. That's why they do. Well, I will put it this way that they're not that ambitious because most of the Dominican people, they're very lazy. They want everything to come easy, and which is not a good thing. They actually focus on efficiency, doing things right, when they should focus on effectiveness, doing the right thing to actually meet that goal. You know, people want to go you know, school, university, study, make a career. There are a lot of Dominicans that also live just a very simple, easy life, just a day by day, whatever they can get to get by. You know, there's many, many ambitious people, also many, many um, teenagers or people are having more education, they want to more have a title, you know, and they want to go to the university, they want to learn, they want to do something that really can uh, increment or just develop their personality and what they they like in the life or what they can do you know much better for them and get some money make their life happy and make you know a nice life i don't think dominicans are ambitious overall i believe that uh, a very small percentage of the population usually the very rich families in this country are overly ambitious um, their ambition knows no limits so this creates a situation where the majority of the population sees no point in having ambition they survive on a daily basis they know that their opportunities are fixed and sometimes um, upwards mobility is impossible there's only two ways of succeeding one is through politics the other one is through business now if I mention politics those that are ruthless they will succeed they will climb up throughout the years the political machinery 
and then they will join the very rich down the line. But politics is a way of upward social mobility. Now, the rest of the people, the population in general, doesn't see any sense in going and doing more than is required of them because they know that they are condemned, they're doomed to live in the same situation in which their parents, grandparents were born in. Philippe. Here we have Philippe. He's always very good at collecting the bottles around Sasua Beach. So, grande dia, para usted. Sí, gracias. Okay. Okay, quit it there. Let me go. Okay, okay. Bye. Right. So. Gracias. Well, I've learned over the years that there's always someone that's always trying to scam you. Meaning, trying to hustle you. Anywhere you go, even if you stand outside a business, even an example, Watchmen wants to scam you. The guy in the gas station wants to scam you with the numbers on the on the meter. The shoe shine boy wants to scam you. You go to the beaches, you have people walking around selling things. If something costs five dollars, they want to charge you forty. Trying to scam you. So why is that? Why is that? Because in this country, the people, since they're not too educated, they always try to make it get an edge over the people around them. So, how did you come to this awareness? I came to this awareness after I've been scammed like ten thousand times. Everywhere you go, there always seems to be some kind of hustle, you know, like like a middleman. They always try to get advantage of a person. Now you worked overseas for a while. Yes, I did. How many years? I worked in uh, the United States for 35 years. Well, I lived in the United States for 35 years. I worked for about 25 years there. So that uh, changed your perception of you on things. Yes, because back in the United States, there can be a hustle, but it's like a real It's rare. But here in the Dominican Republic, I would say about 85% of the times, somebody's trying to uh, hustle you, get the better of you. So would you say that hustling mentality is prevalent in all the cities or towns of Dominican Republic or just here on the north coast? I would say that a person that were to come here for a month will notice that everywhere they go, it can be the big cities, the towns, it can be a mall, it can be on the beach, it can be in a restaurant. There's always seemed to be some kind of, of hustle, some, some person always trying to push you to get that extra dollar out of you. For no reason. Yeah, because you know the people living, uh, the people who living around the uh, the city from tourists, they just try to get some money because the other way you cannot survive in a place like this because everything is expensive around here, you know. And then when the situation is uh, so good, the people pushing a little bit more to try to get the money. Mm -hmm. Is that the same in the cities like Santiago, Santo Domingo? No, because Santiago and Santo Domingo, they don't have tourists. They mm. just make a business with the Dominicans. So that's self-sustaining economies? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Dominicans, uh, I think in general, are good hustlers. Uh, but more so in the touristic areas where there are a lot of, a lot of tourists. Uh, and we call that labia. People have buena labia. And that is uh, ex exactly that. People find the way to convince other people to even you know give them, give them things or to get them to buy their product if they're selling something. Uh, people, it, it's 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 natural in Dominicans. I, I would say that Dominicans in general are um, honest in terms of uh, hustling, but there are a lot of people out there that will like not really tell you the truth about the product that they're selling and just say little lies about their product to make to convince you to buy it people when they come up to you trying to sell you something they won't accept a, a no for an answer <laughs> they just keep asking and going and telling you oh look you should buy this because of this or that uh, this is the best product that you can buy 
uh, and they just they would just won't stop. They just keep going, and you know, until you just like straight up say no, or or you biased. Normally, they gonna try just to make the or to give a better price. So we call that regatear, regatear, like that. You know, maybe can can be enough money for pay what they want really. But sometimes it's working, sometimes it's not, but it's good to try. That's just happened right here in the air. <laughs> yes, every damn day I hustle this way. Yes, every damn day I hustle this way. Yes, every damn day I hustle this way because I'm a hustler. I'm a hustler. No, me. And the cops are amigos, gotta keep things straight And looking cool by the wall in grey Keeping this town tight for play Yes, I'm a hustler, yes, I'm a hustler Oh yeah I love to have my earrings, my bracelets, uh, and my chain, all that stuff, and um, I'm not doing, using nothing at all of them. Here, in the Dominican Republic? Yeah, because the police are gonna show you up like uh, they see that you have money, and you are too young to have such money, and I tell you, you can buy anything here, with a little coin. You know what I mean? So they judge you by yeah. all these little things. And I mean, even by the clothes. I cannot even have some some cool shoes or something like that because they will, will be like, oh, you have to sell drugs because because you are too young for that. You are too young to have such such much money. Could just be an excuse to try to get money out of you, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. I think so. And what about in Germany? No problem wearing no, all that? No, nothing at all. In Germany I had my long hair. Uh, I have my earrings and they was like, oh, you're so fancy. I was like, yeah, cool, I like that, that's for me, that's me. But here I'm Dominican, I have to change a lot. That's difficult for me, really difficult, because I'm not feeling great in my skin right So now. would you say that most Dominicans are like that, or is it just the police that are prejudging you? Oh, uh, I was in Santiago once, and they robbed me just because of that. So, I cannot tell you the difference. So you'd say there's not a... A, a thick line between gangsters and, and uniformed people. No, nothing at all. Here in the Dominican Republic, we have to remember that this is a small third world country. Here, the communication system is not effective. Secondly, here, the police, I would say about one or two percent of the police actually train correctly and fully. So, here, there's always a big problem that the police here in many instances are very abusive towards the population. And a lot of them seem to be picking on the Haitians, even the ones that are just trying to make enough to get food for the day. Well, that comes from our dispute in the 1800s when Haiti took over the Dominican Republic, then we took it back. But another thing is that I would say about 90% of the Haitians in the Dominican Republic are illegal, so police try to extort them. Mr. G, you like to be Haitian man, yes? Well, let me just think about that for a moment. Pretty brutal down here. Oh, oh. I think it's terrible, man. They tried, they, they, they don't make it a good, a good work. Sometimes they made it a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes somebody work good. Because uh, for example in Sosua, we got somebody work for the boss from the police. He tried to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the, the other police, they made a mistake. And then I don't think it's, uh, it's uh, the right way to, to do the thing. So would you say they are very corrupt? Yeah, yeah. our police, not all, I can say all, but the most, they do the wrong thing. Man. They just, they don't do the right thing with the person, with the people in here. 
So they abuse their powers. Yeah, sometimes they abuse, yeah. Oh, we have three different types of police here in the country. We have uh, Ahmed, uh, which are the ones in charge of the, the traffic. We have Sestur, which are in all the tourist destinations. And we also have the Policia Nacional. Uh, I really believe that we need more educated uh, 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 police personnel here in the country. I don't think that um, the majority of them are not very well educated and that's why we're having uh, so many problems of abuse of uh, uh, power. Estoy comiendo ahora, respeto. Un grande negocio. Sí, sí, pero eso es importante. Okay. No gasolina para mí. Yo no funciona. Ok, ok. Sí. Yo llamo a estar. Well, meal time, lunch especially, is very important. Everyone, noon, lunch. And uh, after lunch, siesta time. But first, you know, lunch. You can go to places and, uh, you know, get there at, at, at noon, but they're closing the place because, you know, it's lunch time. Uh, it is very important. Is it like religion? It's, it's like a religion, yes. We need to eat, we need food to continue working. <laughs> If you don't have gasoline in the body, you cannot work. So the food at midday is really important for us. <laughs> it's like a religion. Normally, uh, especially the men in Dominican, they need to eat at midday. If you don't eat at that time, like probably you're angry or you can lose the business too if you have your, you know, many hours without eat, you know, because you are not clearly in the mind, you know. So food is very important for us, especially at midday. That's what they teach us since she later, our mom. At midday, the food, at midday. <laughs> yeah, they, they'll stop their function, I would say for about 45 minutes. They'll just freeze on the, the activity that they're actually doing, just so they have a good meal. What if it's a car dealer and he could sell a car that moment if he just continued to work? Well, here in the country, the food here, so people is sacred, so it's actually a habit of the Dominican people. So he would lose that sale? He would lose that sale here due to the fact that people actually want to relax having that meal. Yeah, because we say eating first. That's what we say in Dominican Republic. We, we eat first. That's it, buddy. Uh, my favorite music here in the Dominican Republic is the merengue. That's always like very old folk music from I would say like three, four hundred years years old. That's very relaxing music. It's one, two, one, two. The steps are easy, and the music is so relaxing. Mm -hmm. Do you like genres like rock and blues and techno and house and all that as well? Well, I'm, more, I'm, mostly, I'm mostly a jazz man. I like something soft, make me relax, meditate, and just do the right thing at work. Cool. Salsa. You know what means salsa? Yeah, you know, sauce. Some, some, <laughs> yeah, sauce like this. Yeah. Okay, so you like salsa? Yeah. Merengue? Merengue. Bachata? Bachata. Tipica? because sometimes yeah you don't like reggaeton no i hate that, that music what about foreign music like rock blues um, even pop music yeah sometimes some some uh foreign music sometimes i like it no all but some i like it young people i think like uh older music because we grow up listening to it uh even even before we're born in our mother's belly uh, people listen to music and I, I think you, you, you have the rhythm in you uh, and I really think that is the reason why we or most people, younger people like 
uh, this type of music, this old music, merengue, bachata, merengue, typical uh, music that you can dance to it. And uh, uh, people just love that. Young kids in Europe, in the States that grow up, uh, with their parents listening to uh, rock or uh, uh, techno or that type of music, they will also like uh, that what their parents uh, listen to. Uno, dos, tres, el peso de la bachata bonito. Si oye rumores en la calle, es que yo te ando llorando. Well, that com that comes through the, through the centuries. It's like a baby that just starts to walk. It just comes to us. You know, we just move and groove. And the merengue, one, two, one, two. It's just, it's just easy. It just comes easy to us. So the parents and family members, do they dance a lot at home so the children copy it? Well, at home, we watch um, TV concerts, many TV concerts, and at the same time, we're always uh, blasting that music at home. So everybody dances, even with the neighbors, the visitors that come by. We just keep dancing. Yeah, because we learn from, from we being a, a kids, we learn it with the with the family. Because uh, in all Dominican houses we have a radio, and then we listen the music every day, and then the people dancing, and we see it when we are little one, when we are children, and then we grow up, and then we know how to dance. I think most people are really good at dancing because we start dancing even before we're born. <laughs> Our mothers dance when you know, you know, they were pregnant, and. We just grow up with this, you know, little kids at home, whenever there's music on, you'll see the kids dancing. And we're not shy to dance. I've seen in other countries that people, uh, kids are a, a bit shy to dance. <laughs> should know is that here in the Dominican Republic, people are scavengers, meaning that the people here are always thirsty to make money that doesn't belong to them, illegally, most people. You don't seem to have a very positive outlook on Dominicans, is that because you experienced something else overseas and came back? Well, here in the Dominican Republic, believe it or not, I would say a I would say every year about 2 million Dominican people get scammed or robbed by other Dominican people. So everybody's always hungry to scam someone else for that money. So I've heard somebody say that the culture of the Dominican Republic is money. Would you agree or disagree with that one? I would agree to that because if somebody can actually get an edge over you and actually do that money, they will do that. The money is very important because our way we keep in the family. Without money, how are we going to survive? It's not easy. That's why we, for us, the money is important. Not only for Dominican, for, for, for the whole world, the people like the money. That's why people from other countries living here looking for money too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We got people from China make business here and try to get money. Money is important for everybody. I think exactly. Yeah. For example, here in the tourism industry, uh, people will just come to you and uh, be persistent when they're selling you something. Sandalia, the the mocasino, the mocasino. Bueno, bueno. The trochi anti lash. About 20 years going back, people actually committed to each other, man and woman. But well, now the last 20 years, everything has shifted. Both sides, the men and the women, they seem to fool around with other people while they're together. And why would you say that is? That is because we do not have, we're not educated. We're not educated in family. Everything comes from family. Yeah, sometimes they, they love 
but sometimes the people just looking for for better life. Uh, for example, the ladies, some lady, they like to have a house with the family, but some ladies they just want the money and living better. That's why sometimes you see the lady around, they they looking for some man to to get a better life. So it's not true love. Nah, sometimes yes. Mm -hmm. Dominican with Dominican or Dominican with some foreign people or foreign men or lady, but knows the most. Mm -hmm. Some people just looking for a better life. Well, I really think Dominicans do fall in love the same way anybody else in the world uh, falls in love with someone. Uh, there is a misperception, and that is because in the, in the tourist areas, uh, uh, it's not so much so, but in general, people. Dominicans fall in love with um, other people just like anywhere else in the world. I really think Dominicans, Dominicans are more romantic uh, because of uh, you know you always want to go out with your with your partner. It's not so much so about buying gifts or uh, flowers but it's going out and uh, the body language with pe the, uh, of people when they go out, couples when they go out, you see that they're more touchy, they're like more c closer to each other. Uh, I really believe that uh, it's more romantic than in some other places that I've been to. If you come in with the love, if you come in with uh, a man like very good looking, if you come in with uh, money, very, very grateful to the life, it's coming like that, but it's not happening like this. It's just what do you want, you know? It's just what makes you happy, you know? And everyone has different kind of point. Everything depends what in the way they live. You know, if you they find someone that maybe is they don't love, but maybe can help and respect a person, or can be that don't respect a person. But if you, if you, for example, are some girl that is, um, you know, need some help, for example, to someone like this in that way, and the education that she has you know, is in that way what she see, that's what she gonna do. Many of them is for convenience and many of them is because they feel love, you know, they like each other. My favorite job would actually be to work as a tour guide. We have every year that come into this country about 4.2 million tourists. That's great, you know why? Because I'm a people person and I actually like to go out, show them around to make sure, to make sure they don't get scammed, they don't get robbed, and to make sure that they come back with other friends uh, following years. To do what I do for 27 years. I live in from the tourists. I got a gift shop. I learned how to speak different language, and that's what I like it and I love. I love. So you my wouldn't job. change it? Yeah, I don't change for any place. Uh, in case if you know tourists don't come here, and then I gotta change the job because mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't survive if I, if they don't come. But if the tourists come, I like to play with them. Great. Yeah. To be the president. To you know, be the president. Yeah, because I want to change, change a lot of things back for good. So I will be building a paradise to be the president. I'll back you. No <laughs> worries. Okay. Thank you. Um, I probably just shape some surfboards. <laughs> that's that's what I really like to do. I I love working with my own hands, making things. And sur making surfboards is one of the things that I know how to do. So I will probably do that for, for a living. Although, yeah, if I have you know, money that I don't really need to work for that. But I'd be doing that because of, uh, I love it. I love doing that. Three, one, three, three.
country seems to be shattered by the corruption widespread here in the Dominican Republic. And let me point out that all that taxpayer money that the actual government gets for the infrastructure, to, to housing for the people, all that goes in the politicians' pockets, high in office, and that's not a good thing because the taxpayer get blinked. They are corrupt. They just uh, they just want money, and they don't care what happened here. The price always up, and we have no job. We only uh, they only looking for money to be rich, and they be rich. They want more and more money. They don't care what happened. So it's like society is like an orange and they just keep squeezing it and squeezing it and squeezing yeah, it. Yeah. So they're not doing much to put something back in. No, they don't care. They don't, they don't make nothing. And they sell the, uh, you know, the property from the government, from the people, they, they sell it to the uh, foreign uh, invest. Properties? Yeah. The property. Even though there's a title on the land? Yeah. So there's a lot of corruption? Yeah, a lot. To the government, I just let them make their job and I do my life. <laughs> I describe him like the most corrupt in the history. They've been putting a lot of taxes and they don't give nothing to the society. So they've been involving in other fresh cases where they've been robbing millions, millions of dollars. The community has no money, no food, no job. A lot of violence, no security, no hospital. So he is the more corrupt in the history. Criminal. <laughs> the first, I would say, after doing studies, is that Dominican people try to get out the country. How do 90% do that? By marrying a foreigner and then getting that visa to leave the country. Second, they try to obtain a big house any, any means way they can. And third, they always try to drive a big expensive vehicle. Uh, like I said, food, uh, house, uh, medicine, uh, something like this. What about rum? No, nah, not rum. <laughs> <laughs> rum is not a priority for, the, for anybody. But right. the people like the rum in here. They drink some time. But the, the priority thing is the food, house, and, and medicine. And mm -hmm. we mix that. We don't have nothing here. Okay. <laughs> Many Dominican youth also try to move to this country, to another country, but it's just for the money. They want to just make more money. They want to be better life and help the family right here. I think that for Dominicans, one of the most important things is uh, their pride, honesty. So if someone comes with a lot of money trying to make you do something that is that you, you don't think is right, they'll just don't take that. You know, money is not always, as we say, you don't, we, you don't take all kinds of money that is going to put your you know, image in question, um, people don't take that money. Everyone, I'm with the owner of Rugama Tours, Rudy. Thanks for being on camera. Now, Rudy, what makes Dominicans special people? The Dominican people is one of the best that you can see in the world. So they're quick to say, tranquilo. Yes, 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 you know, mañana. Uh, slowly, um, tomorrow or later why now why you want to do something now come on slowly and this is the that is what dominican uh, make happy you know stress and problem is not in the in the in the mind from the dominican people you know wonderful thank you very much you're welcome and uh, come out and visit rudy at rugama tours just outside cabaretta i was out paddle boarding here today and you can go with the speedboat he's got other boats around here, if I just swing the camera to the left, you can take nice river cruises out to the ocean. And he's got tree houses and fruit gardens and much more. All the best. Are you welcome. Thanks, Rudy.
se me vaya, no se me vaya. Okay, por favor. No habla ahí. Ok, let's go. Are you ready? No habla ahí. Ok. All right, folks, that nearly concludes this documentary, and thank you very much for watching. It's always my aim to help you, the viewers, receive the real scoop on everything I present to you from down here. So if you find this and other videos valuable, then feel free to show your financial generosity when you meet me in person down here, as making these documentaries do take up a lot of my time, contacts, efforts, risks, devotion, and money. Many thanks in advance. Also keep in mind that I offer relocation consultancy, so simply send me an email with a bit of info about your plans and I'll send you back my price plan. And of course I would like you to leave a comment below, subscribe, tick like and refer this video to your friends. Thank you, take care and happy travels. Bye bye.